Welcome to the Physics Classroom's video tutorial on reflection in mirrors. The topic of this video is concave mirrors, light reflection, and image formation. And we want to know how is an image formed by a concave mirror and how would you describe the characteristics of those images formed by concave mirrors. Uh, Mr. H, let's get started. In a previous video, this one, I discussed what an image is and why it's formed. I've left a link to the video in the description section of this one if you wish to review it. We learned in that video that in order to see an image, you must sight along a line of sight at the image location. And when you do, a ray of light will reflect off the mirror along your line of sight to your eye. If you look at the diagram, you'll notice that there are four observers, and each observer is sighting along a different line of sight, but at the same image location. It's because of this that we define an image as a replica or a representation of an object that's located at the one location in space where it seems to every observer as though the reflected light is coming from. The principles that work for plane mirrors work equally well for concave mirrors. That to see an image, you have to sight along a line at it. And when you do, a ray of light will come from the object to the mirror and reflect along your line of sight to your eye. Here we have a concave mirror with the center of curvature and the focal point mark. And here is an object location. When you turn the light bulb on, it gives off a variety of rays in a multitude of directions, some of which strike the mirror. Here are eight incident rays striking the mirror. And we know something about two of those incident rays. For example, we've learned in other videos that a ray of light that passes through the focal point will reflect parallel to the principal axis. And we've learned that a parallel incident ray will reflect and pass through the focal point. So we know now where the image is located because for these two observers, the image is the location where it seems that all the reflected rays are coming from. And so there is the image location marked in gray. Now that means that every observer has to sight at that location to see the image. So for the other six incident rays, we know that they will pass through that image location, such that an observer sighting at that location will have a ray of light coming to their eye. For this reason, we say that the image is a representation or a replica of the object that is present at the one location in space where it seems that every one of these observers that the reflected light is coming from. For concave mirrors, moving the object to a different location will change the characteristics of the image, but it won't change the principles by which the image is created. So here we have an object moved to a position closer to the mirror, and here's seven incident rays from the light bulb that strike the mirror. Of the seven incident rays, we happen to know that ray number two is traveling parallel to the principal axis, so it will reflect and pass to the focal point. And ray number six passes through the focal point on the way to the mirror, so it reflects parallel to the principal axis. At this point that we have ray two and ray six is reflected ray, we know that the image is located as shown where the gray little star is at. So we know that every observer is going to sight along a different line but at the same image location, which means for the remaining five incident rays, they will reflect as shown passing through this particular image location. So here are seven observers now. Each one of these observers is sighting along a different line, but is sighting at one location in space where it seems that every reflected ray is coming from, and that location is the image. The images formed by mirrors can be real or virtual. Virtual images are always formed by plane mirrors. They're formed whenever the reflected light diverges after reflecting off of the mirror. Because the light diverges, the image location is not on the object side of the mirror. Instead, you must extend those reflected rays backwards to an intersection point behind the mirror. Virtual images are always located behind the mirror. Concave mirrors can produce both real and virtual images. We've seen two instances of real images produced by concave mirrors. Real images are formed whenever the reflected light converges or comes together to a point upon reflection. Observers sighting at the image location are sighting at a location on the object side of the, mirror, of, the, of the mirror. Real images are formed when reflected light rays come together like this. Real images can be projected onto a screen or paper. It's often done in a physics lamp. As you see above, there's a light bulb with a smiley face on it. 
and the image of that light bulb is projected onto a note card. This is because it's a real image. Light is present at the image location, so you can focus that image onto a screen. The same thing is shown here at my right. You'll notice that there's an object with a smiley face on it and an image projected onto a note card. Real images are projectable because light lands at the image location. Virtual images are not projectable. They're located behind the mirror. Light doesn't get through the mirror and behind it, and as such, virtual images are not projectable. The characteristics of a concave mirror image depend upon where the object is located you will likely have to learn how to describe the characteristics of an image for your physics class. The mnemonic LOST is a useful means of remembering how to do it. The L of LOST stands for location. You would describe the location of the image relative to points along the principal axis, like the center of curvature, the focal point, and the mirror. The O of LOST stands for orientation. If the image is flipped upside down, you'd describe it as being inverted. If the object's right side up and the image is right side up as well, then you describe the image as being upright. S stands for size. You describe the size of the image as being magnified, that is, larger than that of the object, or reduced, smaller than the object, or the same size as the object. The T of lost is what we've been talking about. It describes the type of image as either being a real or a virtual type image. It's at this time in every video that I'd like to give you an action plan, a series of next steps for making the learning stick. But before I help you out with that, could you help us out by giving us a like, subscribing to the channel, or leaving a question or comment in the comments section below. Now for your action plan. Here are three resources, each of which can be found on our website. I've left links to each in the description section of this video. You have a pretty awesome simulation page, a collection of animations, and a tutorial page, which was the basis for this video. Whatever you do, I wish you the best of luck. I'm Mr. H, and thank you for watching.